In this video, we're going to examine baking the light map. Now, what happens when you bake a light map is a texture atlas is produced and that texture atlas is blended with the scene to permanently burn, if you like, the shadows into the scene so that they don't have to be generated using real time lighting. The first thing we want to consider is the size of the meshes that we plan to light map because these meshes are going to take up space inside these texture atlases. Let's consider the seabed if we just take a look at our islands here. We have the seabed. It's a very large mesh underneath the water. We really don't need to bake this into our light map. So we can disable right away static for light mapping. Well, actually, first let's make the islands all static. And in this particular one, we can disable static for light mapping. And now it's not going to be considered in the light map. And what we can do is later we can just darken it so that it matches the shadow produced on the islands by the other things. The other thing that we need to consider is static in and of itself. Most of our background elements should be static. We need to double check them. So first our bushes, yes, they're static. That's good. Our rocks, yes, they're static. That's good. Let's take a look at our trees. They're static. And they're static. And what about our boat? It should be static for light mapping. Because we have our little rocking animation, it doesn't need to be static or probably shouldn't be static for the rest of things. But for light mapping, we can make it static. And you'll notice that it's not static for anything else. Our bridges, you probably want to make these a prefab. I haven't done that. The bridges probably should be a prefab, but definitely they should be static. Not only for light mapping, but for everything. The islands themselves, we just marked them as static with the exception of the plane. And the cottages, the cottages should be static. Just this object though, not the children. And this particular cottage has that lighting effect on it that is rotating the normals. Well, we'll still make it static for light mapping. This object only. The other thing we need to be concerned about when we're light mapping is something called light map UVs. So if things don't have light map UVs, they won't show up in the light map. So we need to select the model. And we need to look at the importer for the model. And we need to see in the importer for the model whether or not it is marked as generate UVs. Well, this is the prefab. I don't want the prefab. I want the model. Let's find the model. All right, that's the model. And you notice right here we have generate light map UVs. If we want something light mapped, we need that turned on. And we need to apply that. So that takes care of the bush. Now, what about the rocks? Again, that's the prefab. I don't want the prefab. I want the mesh. And I want to look at the importer. Again, we want to generate light map UVs and apply that. What about our trees? Poly surface one, that's the mesh. There's the mesh there. Again, generate light map UVs and apply. And these should be the same. Let's double check it. Yeah, okay. What about the boat? Let's find the mesh. Generate light map UVs is fine. And the bridges. Let's again find the mesh. And we need generate light map UVs there. The islands themselves. Let's have a look here. Generate light map UVs. We need that turned on there. And the cottage. Again, find the mesh. And it has generate light map UVs turned on. Islands, cottages. I think that's pretty much taken care of the background. Okay, we have this cube. And we have the water. And once again, we're going to want to generate light map UVs. And the distant islands, we probably should make sure we have it turned on there as well. Although, did we mark them as static? They don't really need to be light map static. We're not really going to be doing any light mapping with them. So let's turn them off. We don't need them to be in our light map. And I think that's it. I think we're ready to generate our first light map. So at this point, we want to open the light mapping window. And we're going to dock it here. 
Actually, there's one more issue before we generate our light map. The trees are using a shader that don't support light mapping. And so if we generate the light map, the trees will actually become transparent and they'll disappear. And the way we can fix that, there are several ways that it can be fixed. And you can search on the internet and find the various ways that it can be fixed. But in my opinion, the best way to fix it is to simply give these things the scale in the light map of zero. And what that essentially means is that these objects won't receive any shadows, but they'll still generate shadows. And that's what we want to happen with our palm. So for all of our trees, their scale in the light map should be zero. And it looks like it is. I'm not actually typing that. That is changing by itself. And let's just check these ones then. Let's put a zero in all of these just to make sure. You should all have a scale of zero in the light map. Same with these. All right, hopefully you have everything set up correctly. Now we simply need to bake the light map. We're going to go to low quality instead of high quality just to speed things up. And now we just click the bake button. So you can see it's exporting everything to Beast and then Beast will do the light mapping and you'll actually see the progress of the light mapping showing up down here. Now this is a time consuming operation. It's going to take a little bit of time, several minutes probably. So we're just going to have to wait for it to finish and then we can look at what our light map scene looks like. All right, the baking of the light map is finished. The light maps have been generated and now they're being imported. And what has happened is these images have been created and we'll take a look at these images in a second and you'll see that they are in fact texture atlases. And there is a video in the series on texture atlases and how they're used in various ways. And one of the ways in which they're used is in static light mapping. These will just take another minute to import and then we can look at each of the images. So now we can go to our scenes folder. And you'll notice here there's this new folder with the same name as the scene. And if we had multiple scenes, there would be a folder for each scene that we had light mapped. And inside here, you can actually see, if we go back to the inspector, these images, which in fact are texture atlases. And they're being mapped across our scene to provide this baked lighting effect. So let's just take a look at what it looks like. Let me just maximize this. And you can see we have shadows that are baked right into the scene from all of the objects that we marked as static and that are in our light mapping set. Now let's run the game and take a look at those baked shadows. Well, there you go. Now, one of the things you're going to notice right away is that the real time shadow on the player is a lot darker than the baked ones. And you can search the internet and you'll find this is a common problem that after light baking, the real time shadows come out a bit darker. Let me just run across and look at some of the other shadows. Now let's just drop underwater so you can see the seabed. And you can see the seabed is not darker. The islands have a bit of a shadow on them, so we can darken the seabed up later. But what we want to do now is just deal with this dark real-time shadow. And there are a couple of ways to deal with the darker real-time shadows, but the easiest way is simply to adjust our light. So if we come to our light here, sunlight, we can just adjust the strength. Currently the strength of our shadows is set to one. Let's just tune that down to 0.75 and then run the game again and have a look at what our real time shadows look like. Okay, maybe that's too low. Let's just try this again and try to find a value that gives us the kind of real time shadows that we want. 0.85. Yeah, that looks about right. Now let's just maximize that again. Let's move somewhere where the shadow is easier to see. Maybe the other side of the island. There we go. Now we can turn around and see the darkness of our real time shadow. Yes, that's pretty much matching the baked shadows now. So that's the easiest way to fix the real time shadow issue is just to turn that down. Now there's one more issue. You may notice this spotlight isn't showing up on the ground. And the way to fix that is to come in and find our spotlight, which we put in all trees. And here it is here. And here's the spotlight. Its light mapping is currently auto. We can just make it real time only. And now let's maximize and fire up the game. 
And now let's go and have a look at that spotlight. And as you see, by changing it to real time only now, we're getting a nice spot around our coconut again. Now, there's lots and lots and lots of things you can do with light mapping. If you look at the light mapping settings, there's a whole bunch of settings. You can set a skylight color and that will soften your shadows. So that's another way we could have softened our shadows is by using a skylight color. There's a bunch of different settings for bounces. You can look at all of these. What I've covered here is the basics of light mapping, just enough to get you going. But you can really dig right down into the details of light mapping and do a whole bunch of other things with light mapping that are much more advanced than this. We're not going to cover all of those things here. I just wanted to give you a flavor and a feel for the light mapping, show you that it is in fact just another texture atlas, and show you how to handle some of the typical problems like the real-time shadows being too dark, the light map UVs not being generated, and all those little niggly details that as a beginner you may run into and be scratching your head and saying, why isn't this working? This should have just worked. Well, it almost works and you need to tweak it a little bit. And with that, I'm going to end this movie on baking the light map.